Cycling computers have really come a long way since I first started tracking my rides on this Garmin Edge 500. Similar to smartphones, it seems like we've come to a point where there really is no limits to what these things can do. And because of that, this video could, well, nearly be an hour long. But instead, I'm going to spare you the details that you can find on Hammerhead's website and share eight notable things that I learned about the Karoo 2 and in particular how it worked for bikepacking. Let's do it. The Karoo 2 is slimmer and lighter than the original Karoo 1, coming in at 131 grams. However, it is much larger than any offerings uh, from Wahoo, both the screen and unit itself. But you might be asking, wow, that thing looks big. Is it too large? Actually, no. Now that I'm used to the Karoo 2, I think it's a perfect size. The Karoo 2 comes with a 3.2 inch smartphone grade touchscreen display. And I found that the screen size was indeed touchscreen friendly, as opposed to say some smaller touchscreen units on the market. But like all touchscreens, some gloves just will not work with the Karoo 2 especially say colder weather gloves. So you need to keep that in mind. But the highlight here is not the touch screen, it's the resolution. This is hands down the clearest, most detailed screen that I've used on a cycling device. The screen also has a super nice anti-glare feature, but like any device, if the sun hits it in the right spot, it will glare. The unit is made to be customized, so you can actually color match it with their custom color kit, which I know some people will appreciate. I ended up putting this blue on. Uh, they've got red, yellow, what have you. Finally, the unit does come with a proprietary mount, which is actually pretty cool, but I didn't really use it because I have so many Garmin mounts and the unit comes with a Garmin insert so that you can use it on all Garmin mounts. Hammerhead uses a web page dashboard and not a companion app. And I have found this to be good and bad. The dashboard is really easy to use and it's simple, which is what I really like about it. You can see all of your past rides, but this is also where you can import your routes. You can build a route on the dashboard as well. You can drag and drop a route file directly into the dashboard, or you can simply copy a route URL from a third party website like Ride with GPS and paste it into the import route section. This is extremely easy to do so long as the Crew 2 is connected to Wi-Fi, it is instantly on the device. Some people may be saying, well, isn't that more steps compared to the Wahoo Companion app? See, the problem I've had with the Wahoo Companion app is that when I finish a ride with GPS route, it takes forever to actually upload to the Wahoo Companion app. So I don't mind logging into the Hammerhead dashboard and uploading a route that way. I guess the downside here is you need to either be connected to Wi-Fi or install a SIM card to upload a route to your device. Unlike Wahoo, where you can actually push the route to the device from your smartphone without being online. The dashboard is also where you upload workouts and also integrate with other third-party accounts like Strava. So when your ride is complete, they automatically upload. But again, you need to be in Wi-Fi or you need to pay for a low data SIM card, which to be honest is kind of silly. Considering SRAM now owns Hammerhead, I'm willing to bet we see an app in the not too distant future. I just want to take a quick moment and mention that this video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles. It's a new era for the Storm Chaser. The GRX SUS model brings gears, suspension, and a dropper post to Salsa's stalwart gravel bike for added capabilities. Storm Chaser SUS laughs at chunky, rutted washboard gravel roads thanks to Class 5 VRS and the RockShox Rudy 40mm fork. The alloy frame is tough, and that frame and fork will clear mud cake tires, and the alternator dropouts still offer the single speed option. So for more details on the Salsa Cycle Storm Chaser, you can hit this card right here, and I also have a link provided below. So I've had multiple conversations about the Crew 2 and battery life. And I think this is the biggest drawback to the Crew 2. And perhaps they get a lot of feedback on this as they made a graph and a web page showcasing ways to maximize your battery life. The biggest red flag to me on that page was that they suggest swiping away from the routes or map page to save battery. I'm not sure about you, but as a bike packer, I like to see the routes in front of me all the time. On a recent bike packing trip, I actively tested the battery life 
and compared it with other devices my friends were using. The first day, the Garmin 1030 Plus and the Wahoo Element Roam both had significantly less drain than the Karoo 2. So I proceeded to turn off all of my sensors on the Karoo 2 that evening, charge the device, and start anew. Day 2 was just as bad. I selected the route and followed the route on the map page all day. Towards the end of the day, even with audio signals turned off, brightness turned down, battery save mode on, and all sensors off, I found myself recharging the device about eight hours into the day. I should note here that the black light on this unit is already relatively soft, so when you turn down the brightness, it really is hard to see in the sun. So day three, I learned my lesson. I kept the data field page up and the map page basically off all day and kept everything else off and had better luck with my battery life. But it was still a struggle to get here and one of the storylines of this trip was Neil's GPS battery. Not good. I also tested the device battery life on day rides with no sensors and limited brightness, but used map, data fields, and so on. I ended up getting nine hours and 15 minutes of ride time or roughly 10 hours of total time before having to recharge it. Bottom line, I don't really want to worry about battery life when I'm on a bikepacking trip or just a long ride. I would like to just charge it every other day and call it good. But with the Crew 2, it's almost expected that you think about the battery life, the features, the sensors, the screens that you are on. And even still, it's an inferior product to others as far as battery life goes. Oh, and I also used this device in single digit temperatures on a few rides this winter, and the battery drains really quickly. So this is certainly not a good device for your next winter ultra. When I first got this device and turned it on, I was blown away. The touch screen, the color, the resolution, how similar it reminded me of using my iPhone. But like any new operating system, it certainly takes some getting used to, between customizing the profiles to figuring out all the settings, and I found that it was sometimes a little overcomplicated. I really like the drop-down menu setting, similar to an iPhone where all you have to do is swipe down. This allows for quick adjustments like turning on or off audio alerts, adjusting brightness, and a variety of other features, including a few battery saving options that you may need. I also really like the time and battery percentage that is almost always at the top of the device, no matter what page you are on, as well as little indicators up at the top that show you either that you're in battery save mode or you're connected to Wi-Fi. You can also customize and set up different profiles for specific rides or bikes. I set up a custom one that works really well for bike packing. I also have one set up for bikes with DI2. There are a lot of options here, and they also have a bunch of stock options, so if you don't want to dive deep into the rabbit hole of updating your profile data fields and whatnot, you don't need to do that, but it is kind of fun to mess around. Generally speaking, the Crew 2 is fancy, and the user experience is too. If you're familiar with smartphones and their intricacies, you should understand how the Crew 2 works but it just might take some time. It's almost like Hammerhead really wants you to climb with this device. It, it really is. This device really likes its climbing features too. Hammerhead just launched the Predictive Path Climber feature, which is the first of its kind. It predicts the path that you are going, and if there is a climb ahead, it shows the stats of that specific climb, such as grade, distance, and progress. It's not perfect, however, as it can't always predict where you are going, but it is cool technology that is not just available with uploaded routes. But when you do have a route uploaded, you can swipe up from the bottom to see all of the climbs that you have in that particular route, how far they are from your current location, the grade and length, just to get a general sense of the upcoming terrain. As I mentioned, uploading routes on the Crew 2 is really easy via the dashboard. Once the route is on the device, all you need to do is either open up it in the routes section of the menu or find the maps page and click on add route. The track on the map page is really easy to follow with arrows and a blue and yellow color. At the bottom of the screen, it will show how far you are from your next turn, which is really nice and will beep when you are close to your turn. While I know some like audio signals, I typically turn the audio signals off as I find them to be annoying and take away from my ride experience. If you swipe up from the bottom on the maps page, similar to the climbing feature, it will show turn by turn navigation, 
which I find to be pretty useless unless you really are looking for a specific turn so that you could see how far ahead the turn is. Speaking of rerouting, when you miss a turn, it will notify you if you continue past that turn. Eventually, the unit does reroute you by suggesting a different route, but oftentimes I find that the reroutes are a bit silly and sometimes I'll just turn around or just create a reroute on my own by just looking at the map. Unlike the Wahoo maps, which are pretty minimal, the Crew 2 maps are super nice. They're colored, they have basic features noted like street names, some trail names, and even restrooms, camping, and locations where you can find water. One thing I really would like to see on these maps are topo lines to just get a better sense of the area around me. Some Garmin maps have this, and I really appreciate it because say if I'm looking for a camp spot and I'm trying to find a flat spot, I use the topo lines to see where it's flat so I can pitch a tent. Maybe one of the coolest features of the Crew 2 map page is that you can unlock the map and use your finger to zoom in and out and generally just look around. You can also drop a pin on the map and gives you a suggested route, which I've found to be mostly direct, but it does avoid some busy roads and sometimes does incorporate paths. The map also allows you to get a non-top-down view, giving you a more 3D approach, which is pretty neat but Hammerhead does mention that this sucks up a lot of battery. Maps are available for much of the world and must be downloaded offline. There's roughly 32 gigabytes of storage on this unit. I have a handful of states downloaded and I still have 28 gigabytes remaining. Well, this is a small thing. It truly is something that I appreciate. Hammerhead updates their device every two weeks. Yes, you heard that right, every two weeks. So when you turn on the device every two weeks, Hammerhead will let you know that there is an update. I also get an email each time they release an update and they share what they are updating and why. It's clear Hammerhead truly cares and they listen to the feedback from their users. So that's something I definitely appreciate. Most devices like this are pretty accurate now. Hammerhead uses GPS, GLONASS, QZSS, and BDS satellites to cover most of the world. And I found that it locates my position very accurately in the trees, in canyons, and at high speeds. So no complaints there. And while this may be a small thing, I found that the temperature sensor on the Crew 2 was very accurate. I was riding with a friend that had a Garmin and his unit was reading about 10 degrees warmer than mine and 10 degrees warmer than the actual temperature. Overall, the Hammerhead Crew 2 it's a powerful unit. It has a lot of bells and whistles to compete with Garmin and Wahoo. And while there are some clear needs and updates, especially as it pertains to maybe some simplicity and the battery life, I appreciate the stance they took on this unit. If you're one that loves tech and a similar experience to your smartphone and don't mind paying for it, the Hammerhead Crew 2 is for you. If you want simplicity and a cheaper price point, well, there's plenty of options out there. The Crew 2 retails for 399 USD. And if you have any comments or questions regarding the Hammerhead Crew 2, please put it in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, pedal further.